Separate specialized components provide for better performance, right? Well, once upon a time this may have been true, but nowadays probably a little bit less so. So why would you still want separate components? Well, today it might be about flexibility. Because whether you are a two-channel or home theater enthusiast, having flexibility can be a very good thing. For example, a separate amplifier can help supercharge a system or make it possible to add more speakers if you want. And today's review proves that to do this, you don't have to break the bank. So settle in, subscribe, hit that like button because we're taking a look at Emotiva's brand new BaseX amplifiers. <laughs> Today we're taking a look at the Emotiva A2 and A7 amplifiers that belong to their new Base X line of entry level amplifiers. And the line has a 2 channel, 3 channel, 4 channel, 5 channel and 7 channel amplifier option. And they're all housed in the same chassis so the only way to tell them apart from the front is the number of blue LED lights that illuminate when powered on. The A2 is a two channel or stereo amplifier that has 160 watts per channel into eight ohms or 250 watts per channel into four. It has a pair of five way binding posts and unbalanced inputs. Now the A7 is a seven channel amplifier that is good for 90 watts per channel. Yes, that is all channels driven into eight ohms or 125 watts into four. The A7 has seven five way binding posts along with seven unbalanced inputs. Emotiva's design language has gone relatively unchanged since the brand's inception. That is, of course, if you discount the radical move for the brand to go from silver accent rails to black ones about seven years ago. Now, the brand has been all about, well, value for money. That isn't to say that the new BaseX line is ugly or poorly made, quite the opposite. In fact, it's an incredibly robust design and feels as substantial as the costlier X-Series. Before we dive into sound, let's discuss who the BaseX amplifiers are for, starting with the A2. If you already own a stereo preamp or an integrated amplifier with preamp outputs and are in need of more power, then the A2 may be worth a look. Now for home theater, most mass market AV receivers do not produce the type of power they advertise with all channels driven. This means that your AV receiver may not be powering your loudspeakers to their very best. So long as your AV receiver has preamp outputs for two, five, or more channels, you can easily add any BaseX amplifier to your receiver in order to give your speakers the power they really need. So how do the amps sound? Well, the good news is, is that despite having slightly different power ratings, both the A2 and A7 sound relatively the same. Both amplifiers are fairly neutral and impart little to no coloration to your system or speaker's sound. I say fairly neutral because with these amps in my system, I was able to enjoy slightly better bass depth and control with smoother highs. And I equate these minor enhancements to the amps class AB design because it falls in line with other experiences I've had with other AB amplifiers. The improved bass control and presence of added weight does not make the bass X dark or muddy. It just means that loudspeakers that may be a bit bass deficient are going to sound fuller. And this was evident when listening to music or movies through our Yamo S809 or Focal speakers. And the bass performance, whether you're listening to the A2 or A7, was impressive. Detail, definition, and delineation in the lower octaves in both music and movies were great. And a clear step up from the internal amplifiers inside our Yamaha V6A. And the mid-range performance of both amplifiers is their next best strength. The human voice sounds particularly natural and organic and not the least bit constrained with respect to scale and weight. Now there is no coloration or equalization happening with the Bass X amplifier. So if you have a loudspeaker that skews cool or lean, that signature is going to remain with the Bass X amps. The same is true if your speaker skews warm. The detail retrieval and delineation between performance or instruments is exceptional throughout the mid-range. Now high frequency was one area like bass where I could detect subtle changes to my system's sound with the BaseX amps installed. The Yamaha V6A, when pushed, the high frequencies can become a bit thin and at the very extreme can even become grating. Now with the BaseX A2 installed, this simply did not happen and the high frequencies retained all of their composure. 
And when listening to movies through the new XMC2 processor connected to the A7 amplifier, I noted similar refinement in the high frequencies. Both amplifiers, slightly smoother, less forward demeanor, proved to be a good fit for a wide range of loudspeakers, ranging from our Klipsch Forte 4s all the way to the JBL L82s. With respect to dynamics, this is one area where I think having a separate amplifier can pay huge dividends. And despite the Basex amplifiers being smaller, more affordable, and less powerful Emotiva amplifiers, they sure don't sound it dynamically. In fact, if you hide these from view, I doubt that most people with modern speakers would be able to tell a Basex amp apart from the more powerful X-Series amplifiers. And they had no problem controlling any loudspeaker that we connected to them, and they did so with ease. So dynamic swings like car chases, explosions, or symphonic crescendos never felt the least bit constrained, no matter what speaker we put on these amplifiers. Soundstage-wise, both amplifiers are pretty much equal. I'm not gonna say that the amplifiers enlarge the soundstage, but definition definitely improved. So you're not getting more in terms of scale, but you are going to get a little bit better focus, which is always a good thing. In terms of drawbacks, I don't really have much considering just how much performance you're getting with the Basex amplifier for so little money. That said, I do prefer the A2 over the A7, but only for one simple reason. The A2 has an auto signal sensing switch and that it will turn itself on and off when it senses a signal. It is the only amplifier in the Basex line that has this feature, and I am not sure why Emotiva didn't include it on any of the other Basex amplifiers, and I consider it to be a huge miss opportunity. The only other minor issue that I have has to do with the A2, in that you cannot run the A2 in bridged mono mode, so it is not an affordable mono amplifier solution for those of you that were bound to ask. Had you been able to put this in mono, it would have been a near perfect amplifier, at least to me. But if you need more power, I have to remind you, there is the X series of amplifiers ready and waiting. In terms of comparisons, there are three brands that come immediately to mind. XTZ, Parasound, and Crown. Yes, that Crown. But starting with XTZ. The XTZ amp can only really be compared to the Basex A2 because at this time XTZ doesn't offer a multi-channel amplifier solution. Now the XTZ amps rely on Class D ice power modules, which are great for providing a lot of power efficiently. And as it stands, the XTZ amplifiers are, in my opinion, more neutral than the A2. They impart absolutely no sound, no color, no anything to anything that they're connected to. They are a little bit more powerful than the A2, but they're also more expensive. But I'm going to argue that you're getting more in terms of flexibility with the XTZs because they can be run in mono. So if you like Class D sound, the XTZ is still a no-brainer recommendation from me. But if you are not one that likes Class D sound, the Basex A2 amplifier is going to be worth a look. Parasound, on the other hand, is more of an apples-to-apples -apples comparison with the A2, as I found the Basex A2 to compete very favorably with the Parasound Halo A23 and now A23 Plus, based on personal experience. But I do think that the Emotiva is just a little bit more well-balanced compared to the livelier sound of Parasound. That said, the Parasound product is a little bit better looking and does offer a lot more features in terms of control around back. But as far as stereo amps are concerned, these two products are very evenly matched with the subtle nod going, for me, to the slightly more well-balanced Emotiva. And then there's the Crown XLS Drive Core series of amplifiers. Now, I have been rocking Crown since before it was cool, and the reason I have is because of their insane value proposition. And the XLS Drive Core 1002 competes with the A2, only it costs $100 less, has more power, and like the XTZ, is virtually colorless. But the XLS Drive Core amplifiers are ugly as sin and they are not a good fit for every loudspeaker or every system because of their higher noise floor and input voltage needs. Now, I'm not saying that you can't work around these issues, but if you are looking for an easy amplifier that you can just connect to your existing stereo system without a learning curve, the crown is not going to be for you. Also, if you have high efficiency loudspeakers like those from Klipsch, I would not recommend the crown, again, because of that slightly higher noise floor.
And as for comparisons to the A7 specifically, one that comes to mind is Outlaw Audio's 7000X. Now, the 7000X amplifier does cost more money, but you are getting a little bit more power at 130 watts into 8 ohms versus the A7's 90. The 7000X also gives you balanced input, so whether or not you need just a little bit more power or that connection option is going to dictate whether or not you go with the 7000X over, say, the A7. The new Base X series from Emotiva is the proverbial home run. It delivers 100% on its promise of providing you with exceptional performance at an affordable price, which if I'm being honest, makes BaseX a bigger problem for Emotiva's other amplifiers than it does other brands. Because unless you have just insanely thirsty loudspeakers with respect to power, or you're just one of those people that like to push everything to the absolute ragged edge, you're gonna be just fine with a BaseX amplifier. So if you have an AV receiver with multi-channel preamp outputs or an integrated amplifier with stereo preamp outputs and you want to make sure that you're giving your speakers the proper power they need to sound their best, well, then the BaseX series of amplifiers is a great way to do that without breaking the bank. So that's it. That is my review of the Emotiva BaseX A2N A7 amplifier. Now, what did Christy think? I mean, this one's really a bit harder for me. Okay. Let me start with what I can tell you. Okay. Here's where my, most of my opinions on, with this particular amplifier or these two amplifiers revolve around their looks, okay. which I realize is completely subjective. And maybe there's most of you that don't care about that. But right. for me, I'll start with this. The, the design is an improvement over previous Emotiva products that we've had in-house. Yes. Um, it, does, it's, it's, it looks nice. It looks, it looks a bit more expensive than $399 would lead you to believe. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that bothers me the most about these, this brand is their insistence on using this neon blue light. It is their signature, but yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, They've been using it since the beginning. It is it is their brand. It's on brand, but yeah, it, it can be a bit much. They're obnoxious. <laughs> um, you can defeat it. To be clear, you you can turn the the LED indicator lights off. There are there is a switch on the back. Right, which leads me to wonder why you didn't, <laughs> um, because I've been sitting here all this time thinking, God, those are so ugly. Yeah. Um, and I really wish I didn't see them. Okay. And now I know that a lot of people are going to um, are. With separates, a lot of people probably, I'm guessing, are um, these are these are these are components that are um, not seen yeah. so regularly yeah. as something like, like for example, like our Pioneer Vintage Pioneer, like something like that. You you probably buy that because of the looks, and you want them out front and center. But yeah. with the Emotiva products or or other components like. The crown, which I will at least say this Emotiva is a thousand times better looking than the crown, which is probably the ugliest <laughs> product I've ever seen yeah. in terms of hi-fi. So I get that you're, you're likely going to have these hidden away, either in a rack or as we did in the BDI cabinet yeah. uh, behind a closed door. I don't know. I guess I wonder why, why, the, why, I don't know. I don't get the blue. Uh, they're definitely bright. I'll give them that. They are definitely bright. I think the world has moved beyond uh, blue, but I understand from a branding standpoint, like blue is a color that Emotiva like brands themselves with. It makes an otherwise modern product look and feel dated. I will agree with you. I will agree with you. Style aside, mm -hmm. to me, the bigger question is, and I know you tried to uh, answer this a bit in the review, like, who is this really for? Yeah. W why do I need this? Because I will admit, I, I could not always tell a difference mm -hmm. with uh, the presence of the Emotiva amp, with the exception of the uh, Focal 826. Uh, D's. D's, yeah. yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, speakers that we had when we were listening from a purely home theater standpoint. Yeah. I think that they did add some clarity, mm -hmm. especially to the center ch center channel, or in terms of you know dialogue yeah. uh, when we were watching movies. But beyond that, I I didn't notice. It's it's much harder for me to say. Well, I heard this or I heard that. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Why you would want this? Okay. First of all, um, the fact that you're not fully aware of the emotiva's presence in your system, that's actually a really good thing. Um, for most people, you want an amplifier that just powers your speakers. It's not used as tone control. It's not used to make your system something that it's not. At least to me, that's that's the epitome of neutrality. And the Emotiva uh, Basex amps get pretty much there. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, they're pretty close to being there. Um, as for why you would need this, it's true. A Yamaha V6A or a Denon whatever, on- Onkyo whatever, can power, say, the Focal 826Ds all the way around. It technically can. Um, but you may be running your receiver at close to, say, its red line. And if you're already running at a red line and then the explosion happens, then you're going to send your amplifier into clipping. You're going you're gonna, to you know, peg it out. And then you're overdriving your amplifier. And one of two things can happen. Uh, you can damage your speakers, for one, or you can cause the amplifier to shut down in protection mode. Um, so you may be listening to your folk house, and it sounds great, and you're you're hovering at like a 85 to 90 dB kind of volume level in your house, and it's it's rocking, it's great, it's cool. But then something goes and is really loud in the scene and takes it from 90, 90 95 dB to 105. Well, if the amplifier was already given it a, given it its all to get, or the receiver was already giving it its all to get to that 95 point on, say, a Focal, then you're going to break it. Whereas when you have a dedicated amplifier that has sustainable power, like the Emotiva Basex amps, A2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, whatever, um, you are not taxing those amplifiers as hard as you are in an AV receiver. Because a lot of times an AV receiver's power amplifier section is also drawing power from the same power source that has to be shared with all of the other things that the receiver needs to do. And so by having an amplifier with its own power source, its own sustainable, consistent power, you just really mitigate that risk, that risk of your system breaking your receiver or worse, damaging your loudspeakers. Do you need to rush out and buy a separate amplifier? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. If you are someone that lives in an apartment or even lives in a house and you're like, Andrew, I don't listen in excess of 100 dB. Or you currently own loudspeakers that are like 90, 92, 93 dB efficient. Your receiver is going to be fine. It's going to be fine. We went over this in our deckware review. It's going to be fine. But if you're starting from scratch, you're building a two-channel system or home theater from scratch, you have some choices to make. Um, If you know that your speakers are relatively sensitive to power, then you can get away with an AV receiver. You don't need to worry about it. But if you're like, no, I want, I want, you know, bigger speakers. I want to fill a large room or all that. Well, you can get a more expensive AV receiver with better power amps inside, like the NAD T778 or the Rotel um, or something along those lines. Or you can get a separate processor and amplifier like the XMC2 and an A7 or an X-Series 7-channel amplifier. You can make those decisions. Same thing with stereo. If you're trying to build a two-channel system, you can get an integrated amplifier with all of the power that you need, like the Musical Fidelity M5SI. Like adding an A2 to the M5SI isn't going to make a big difference. If any difference, it actually will probably not be as good, right? But if you have, say, an Arillic A50 uh, integrated, with a little tiny, you know, class D amplifier inside. Well, it has preamp outputs. You could use then the A50 as a preamp to an A2 and get a better system. See what you kind of see what that what I'm talking about. So it's just it gives you some flexibility, gives you a couple of things to think about depending on where you are in your journey. Um, but having more power or appropriate power to your loudspeakers is never a bad thing. And the best thing about the BaseX line is it delivers all of that for not a lot of money. And that's why I would advocate for something like BaseX over just about anything else, honestly, because obviously you can spend an insane amount of money on power amplifiers. We've seen it. I've owned them. But for the vast majority of people, for the vast majority of people, 
honestly, something like a BaseX A2, A3, A4, A5, or A7, it's gonna get the job done. It really is, and you don't need to go crazy spending more money than that. All right, that is our review of the Emotiva Base X A2 and A7 amplifier. What did you guys think? Let us know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, I got a question of the day for you, and that is, in 2021, are separate components still important to you? Let me know. Let's get a discussion going over going receivers, integrateds versus separate components. I wanna hear what your thoughts are. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you have continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here, and both of us thank you all very much. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile, and that is it for us today, so remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you again for watching, and we will see you on the next video. Bye.